Hey everybody, and welcome to the channel. My name's Travis, and you're watching Indelible Makes, all 35 of you. Uh, today I wanted to show you a model that I just recently painted, and I was going to do a very detailed tutorial. But I've lost a lot of footage, and apparently my hair got in the way of a bunch of others, so I apologize. I'm going to do my best to kind of give you a rough idea of how I did this and I'm going to take it as a learning experience so that the next video is much better. Uh, please deal with the growing pains of this and I hope this helps you in any way. Thank you. So the model originally comes in two pieces, top and bottom. It's a really big gap and it doesn't sit well. So the obvious solution to that is going to be, of course, green stuff. I did a little roll and I basically just squeezed it in between the two pieces just like so and then I scrape off all the excess giving it some texture right afterwards okay so now that it's in one piece we can go ahead and prime it for me personally I use army painter primers I just love the colors that they come in So for the base paints, we have Rackhar Flesh, Cadian Flesh Tone, Bugman's Glow, Pink Horror, Mephistian Red, Abaddon Black, Morfang Brown, and Death World Forest. I'll put all these up on the screen, but that's what I used to start off with. Okay, so at this point, the only thing we've done is Rackhar Flesh, and it looks good doesn't have to be meticulous. Then you're going to take some Cadian flesh tone just like so and put it all over the model. This gives you two colors to start out with and it really starts to pop. It kind of looks like normal skin but that's what we kind of want. The first one's kind of rotting, the second one's kind of voluptuous. Uh, trust me it'll look right later on. Now here we're starting to use Bugman's Glow. It's another shade deeper, and we're just going to keep putting it on all the little bulbous parts. Everything that sticks out on this guy, anything that kind of comes out of the ordinary, well, it's going to be a little pinker than, say, something that was an inch or two away from something else. Are you starting to see a pattern? Because now we're going one shade even brighter or deeper, however you want to look at it, and we're going to use the pink horror for the tentacles and boy are there a lot of tentacles anyone that is a anime enthusiast should be overjoyed with this model it's going to tell all the people in your life that you are a creep just like me other than that there's two shade paints that I really like to use Agrax Earthshade everyone knows what it is it's just a detail popper but then there is the Karaberg Crimson now this is almost like voluptuous pink, but different, deeper, and it gets in the nooks and crannies a little better. Really like it, especially for anything that seems sore, bloated, uh, you know, nurgly. Okay, so now that the bases are on, we can start adding some contrast colors. I decided to use Orc Flesh, Plague Bearer Flesh, Slanesh Purple, Flesh Terrors Red, Voluptuous Pink, Ivadin Yellow, and Griffhound Orange. When you dilute these a little bit in water, or just spread them out enough in a dry wet brush if you will, um, you can really get thin layers of this, and I find it really good for bruising. Uh, just any kind of shading, use it very lightly. I only use them on top of other colors. I would never 
ever use a contrast paint as its intended purpose. I don't think it looks good. I, I just don't. Right here, you can see me using the iodine yellow. It really looks good on blood and guts and bile. You want it to pop, pop, pop. It can't always just be red, purple, and blue. That's boring. Get some bright colors in there like yellow. Yellow and orange completely and criminally underused. On the fly here, I decided that the pink tentacles were a little too much. And while I liked it, I wanted something else. So I decided to add the Death Forest Green. Then we have some metallic paints. I'm a metallic metallic man. I know a lot of people don't like metallics. I think they really shine, no pun intended, especially when you get, are doing gross things. So I have Brass Scorpion, Lead Belcher, Retribution, Retribution Armor, and Warp Lock Bronze. And then finally, for the end of it, I have Blood for the Blood God, of course, for the tasty bits. And then I used a little bit of Tesseract Glow mixed with some Nurgle's Rot, just mixed into some resin for the base. Uh, other than that, it's just trial and error and seeing what works for you. I hope this was helpful, and I'm really sorry it's not that detailed, but... At least you know exactly what I worked with here and how I did it. Kinda. Either way, have a good day.